Hello guys, welcome back to another video for the Space Shooter series. This is, of course, Game Development Tutorials. Um, so last time, what we did, we just, uh, we created our first script, and we made the player move. Um, you can make it up and down. Um, I think you know how to do that, but I'm just going to show it to you just in case. Let me just open the script back up. Okay, so how you would just do the up and down movement. Just copy this, paste this. You would do W or up arrow. But you would do zero movement on the X. You would do the movement on the Y. And that is how you would do the up and down movements. But today, we are not doing that. We are focused on shooting. So this will definitely be fun. So yeah. Let us begin. Hot lettuce. Um, so last time I kind of forgot to add, to re-add the collider. But, I think I can say if we do that. So we're just going to add a, a component. But it won't be a box collider. It will be a mesh collider. I'm just going to drag that to the top, set it to convex, that's required now, and set the mesh to default. Whoop. Um, I guess, yeah, let's just put it on to the graphics of the player. But we'd not want a rigid body, we want a mesh collider and it should do that automatically. There we go. So there is the collider. By the way, we also want to tag the player with the player tag. Uh, so yeah. So now let's get to shooting. So this video will teach you how to clone objects and then move those objects, which I think you already know how to do. But let's first make uh, the objects before you actually start cloning them. So we are just going to create a 3D object, this will be a cube. We can just reset this position by right clicking on the transform, saying reset. Then let's rename this by just clicking where it says cube, and rename it to bullet. Okay, so I'm just going to, with the move tool, you can press W for that or click this icon. Let's just move it forward. And then, we can scale it with the scale tool. You can use it by pressing R or clicking on this icon. And by the way, uh, the box glider will automatically scale with it, I think. So yeah, so, we, so we're just going to scale that down. Scale it like that. Then, just bring it in. Okay. Make it a bit longer. Okay. A bit longer still. That looks good. Okay. Now we want to colorize this. So, because we just don't want it to be white. So we're just going to add another folder by right clicking in the assets, going to create a folder. We're just going to call this materials. That's not how you spell it, but whatever. Now we're going to right click on this folder, do create, and then material. We're just going to call this bullet. Okay, so do not be frightened by this yet. <laughs> yet, just saying that there's a lot of options, that, so that just means a lot of freedom. But right now, all we are going to do is click on this little white box and drag this little circle to the very edge so it's red. Now, you're just going to drag this onto the bullet. Just like that. And now, we are just going to check emission. So this is basically like the shadow, what the shadow's color is like. We're just going to click on the black, and then we just want to change that to full red. So now it's just full red all over 
because we don't really want to render shadows. Um, so I would take up a bit of computing power, I guess. Just the CPU. So there is our bullet. I did not spell that correctly. Okay, so we are just going to add a ridge body to this. Uh, I'm just going to freeze all of these axes except for the Z axis and set the collision detection to continuous and check off used gravity. Now we're just going to give this its own script. So I'm just going to right click in the script folder, go to create C sharp script, and we're just going to call this bullet. Okay, let's just let it compile. Then we want to select the bullet game object and just add the bullet script to it. There we go. Okay, now, yet again, we can double click on this to open it up. And it will open up this. And it's basically the same thing as the player movement, so we're just going to delete all of this. We're, we're just going to write public float speed, set that equal to maybe 85, because we want this to be pretty fast. And we just want to say void update, just like how we did in the player void update. And we're just going to call transform dot translate. Uh, we want to move on the z-axis, so we will say 0f, zero 0f, zero speed multiplied by time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent so it doesn't go faster when the frames are going faster or higher. Uh, so yeah, that is actually it for the bullet script. Because now, if we go back into Unity and just press play, but we'll just zoom off. I think I'm just gonna make the speed 100. And then, so uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to a lot of new things this video. So we're just gonna create a new folder, and we are just gonna call this folder prefabs. So what a prefab is, um, I'm just gonna show you. Okay. So, to actually make this bullet a prefab, we're just going to drag it into the prefab folder. And prefabs are marked because they are blue. So now, um, if we just keep dragging bullet clones into the scene, let's just move them around a, a little bit. Now, on this main prefab, so in this folder, in this bullet folder, this bullet, um, and if we just set the speed to 10, now all of the bullets will be slow. And also, if we, I don't know, just want to make the speed back to 100, but we don't want to do it here. We want to do it on the actual bullet game object that's in the scene. We can just change that, and then go up here to overrides, and hit apply all. Then you'll, you'll notice that this is no longer bolded, and that all of these bullets have speed 100 on them. Okay, so now we can safely delete these bullets from the scene, because we can just drag them in at any time we want. So now, let's actually clone them in-game. So we are just going to make another script. Uh, we are just going to click add, add component, and we're just going to call it player shoot. And I'm, I'm going to press enter, and then enter. Okay, so now I'm just going to drag this player shoot script into the script folder, just like that. Okay, save the scene so there's no longer an asterisk here. Double click on the player sheet to open it up. Okay, so first of all, we want to define some variables. We want to define public float. We want to define a fire rate. And two more things. So we want to do a public game object. 
So a game object is anything that is in the scene or that has a transform component on it. Or it's basically everything. <laughs> Except for the folders, all that stuff. Public game object, this will be our projectile. I'm going to call it bullet. Then one more variable, public transform. So this is basically the same as a game object, but I'll, uh, I'll show you what's different about it. And we just want to call this fire point. I I'm just going to move this down. So let's do control X to cut and control V to paste. Okay. So now we can actually assign these. So for the fire rate, I'm just going to keep it at, at zero for now. So basically the fire rate, zero is you have to click it every time every time you want to shoot. And then like 0 0.1 fire rate will be every when you're holding down click, every 0 0.1 seconds a bullet will spawn. That's basically what it is. Okay, so for the bullet, you're, we just want to go into the project panel, go under prefabs, and drag the bullet prefab into this slot. Okay, so now we want to define a fire point. So, we are going to create a, an empty game object. So what that is, is it's basically a game object, but it's invisible. So, we can just right click on the player, say create empty, let's call this fire point, and this is where our bullets will spawn. So, I'm just going to drag it, I kind of want them to fire out of these little things, even though they're not, you know, guns or anything that looks like that they contain, that they can contain ammo, but whatever. Okay, I'm just going to call this Firepoint 01, so we will have two. And I'm just going to click back on the player, and just drag in that Firepoint. Okay. Now, to duplicate this Firepoint, I'm just going to click on the line that it's on, and, and just do Control D. I'm just going to call this Firepoint 02, Firepoint 01. Save the script. Then we're just gonna create one more fire point because this weapon will be a mul a multi shot. So once again, in the fire point one o one slot, you're just gonna drag fire point o one in. Then to duplicate this, rename it to fire point o two, and let's make the x value ne negative. So it's on exactly the other side. Okay, then let's drag Firepoint 2 into the Firepoint 2 slot. Let's go back into our script. So 13 minutes, oh my gosh. Okay, now let's make this actually shoot. So, we're just going to do void update. Uh, we are not going, going to incorporate the fire rate into this video because that's a bit complicated. So, we're just going to say if input not get key get mouse down we just want to say mouse zero so that is left click and mouse one is right is right click then i'm assuming mouse two is middle button click so then we just want to style the same thing so do that and now whenever we click this code will run so in order to clone a game object we are going to say instantiate, that means clone. So what the instantiation takes in is it takes in what we want to clone. So in our case, that would be bullet. Where we want to clone it, that would be 5.01 for now. And then the rotation that we want it to be at. So, uh, we are just going to do it at firepoint dot rotation. And this will be firepoint dot position. Okay. 
So now if we go back into Unity. And if we press play on this play button, and then we just click, the bullet will fire off. Pew 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 pew. If you spam, it will go really fast. But there's one problem. As you can see, every time a bullet is cloned, it does not go away. Which means that it can create lag very easily. So, we just want to say, game object, bullet geo is equal to instantiate bullet at the fire point dot position at fire point dot dot rotation. But this is just an extra check, you don't always have to put this. But we'll say as a game object. And then, we just say, destroy bullet geo after 5 seconds. Uh, right now, follow along, I will explain everything later, but you'll just get into the habit of it, and then you'll start to understand. Okay, so now when we press play, press save, yes I did. Okay, now if we press play, if we shoot, bullet is spawned, then after 5 seconds, it should delete. There we go. So now if we just shoot a lot, then they will start to delete. So now this will not be cluttered up and it will not create lag. Okay, so we have one more thing to do, and that is for the other fire point. So what I am going to do, I am going to create our own method. So in Scratch, that is basically making your own block. So to do that, we are just going to write void, then our method name. I'm going to call it shoot. Then we want two parentheses, and then the curly brackets. Now, I'm just going to highlight all of this, control X, then go into the shoot method, and do control V. Now, whenever we call the shoot method, this code will all run. So, how to call it, it's pretty simple. We just will write the method name, two, two parentheses, then a semicolon. And it will do the exact same thing. So now, it will still shoot. And it will still delete. After five seconds. Okay, so now, what we have to do, we are just going to make some space, duplicate this, and bullet geo 2 or something. I'm just going to use bullet geo 1, bullet geo 2, or bullet game object, that's what it means. Same sheet, bullet at fire point 2 dot position, and at fire point 2 dot, dot rotation as a game object. Then, we will just destroy bullet two, bullet geo two after five seconds. And it will do the exact same thing, except it will do it twice. So this is a multi-shot spaceship. So now, it will shoot twice. Pew pew pew. Then, when we get more advanced, we will improve upon this method so we don't have to write this twice because that will get very repetitive. Um, but right now, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I mean, I'm enjoying this. Um, so yeah. I hope that, it, that, you, guys, that you guys have enjoyed and will continue watching the series till it is done. Because believe me, you will be satisfied with this. And that is it. Bye, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye.